I'm the fourth generation on the uh, Falk farm. The family's been here for a long time. Farm means a lot to us. It's important that we do the right thing and kind of work with sustainable practices so that it'll be here for the next generation and the next generation. We are a, a full service seed outlet in that, in the sense that we, we offer all sorts of products. Um, the, the conventional farmer that wants corn and soybeans, you know, we, we handle those products. In addition, we, we handle a lot of small grains and, and promote that, we promote the rotations. We think it's, it's better to have a number of rotations in our farming practices for a number of reasons. The uh, east branch of the Chippewa River flows just north of our farm site here, and we have uh, land that is in the river bottom. We love that uh, territory. We're avid hunters, deer hunters, and, and pheasant hunters, and that property means a lot to us, and protecting it is very important for our family. The Minnesota Pollution Control Agency has found portions of the Chippewa River to be impaired for phosphorus, sediment, mercury, and fecal coliform. The sources of pollution in the 1.3 million acre basin are numerous. Yet, like many rivers in the region, agriculture is a primary contributor. Agriculture is also one of the few sources that remains largely unregulated under the Clean Water Act. Water quality is something we can't, we can't fix quickly. We've been talking about it for a long time, but we haven't got to the point where we're getting results here. The Folk Farm has installed waterways in their fields to catch and hold runoff. This helps prevent soil and polluted water from leaving the property while aiding groundwater recharge. We have what we call kind of gently rolly ground. We put in the waterways and put in, you know, those conservation practices that would help act as filters. They also incorporate perennial alfalfa into the crop rotation. Alfalfa provides year-round ground cover, which helps keep soil on the land and slows runoff. You know, we have volunteer programs in place. The government has incentivized certain programs, and it's commendable what they're trying to accomplish, but it seems to be a little too little at times. There's just not enough acres that are being protected, and consequently then when we have massive rain events or or uh, storms and, and flooding, then we, we end up with uh, we end up with issues with our water. If the farm operations are so large that they don't really have time to worry about what's happening with the water or happening with the soil, then that's not what their emphasis is. And it's a little different than those uh, farm families where they they plan on on taking care of that land you know, through this generation and the next generation. So their emphasis is, is significantly different. Community is best served when there's a local uh, farm base that supports the community. Farm families that are growing up and raising their families within the community, they feel tied to it. I'm hopeful though, people are becoming more aware that water quality is an important issue. It's been instilled in, in me, and I watched it as I grew up, the practices that were important for the farm, and that was to, to uh, prevent erosion and keep the soil on the land and, and put, put the right practices in place so that, you know, so you're, you're protecting the water, protecting the land. Three generations working together, and, and it's just, uh, it's, been a lot of, it's been a lot of fun to, to be together in this operation.